Uh, okay, uh, it looks like um, this session is being recorded. So first of all, I would like to say thank you for joining me tonight. Um, welcome Lala, Nogzota, Menzi, and Sinki. Uh, so we're a total of five people, which is amazing. Um, I love small numbers, but uh, thank you so much guys for joining. I hope this session is going to be beneficial to all of you in here. If you do happen to have load shedding, signal problems, or anything of that matter, you must not worry at all because this session is being recorded. I will share the link um, with you guys and I'll also upload the, the video to the, to the YouTube channel uh, so that you can access it at a later stage. So I would also like to welcome those that just joined us. Uh, Andy Swa and Andy Bua. Okay, um, okay, so today um, as voted uh, yesterday, today we're going to be discussing uh, labor law. Uh, some of the aspects of labor law were discussed uh, on this very same um, platform uh, last year. Uh, that's why I said you need to refer to the older videos and um, and obviously we're going to be covering new things, but it's mostly going to be something like a recap. Before we get into the business of the day, um, I would like to find out from you guys. How are you guys doing? How, how's 2023 going? Anyone, go for it. If you're in a position where you can talk, you can put your hand up or you can unmute and go for it and tell us how the year has been going. But nonetheless, while we're still waiting for volunteers to tell us how 2023 is going, uh, from my side, it has been a very, um, it has been a very busy year, I can say. Uh, <clears throat> since the academic year started, it has been super busy for me. That's why I haven't been doing the videos. Um, but because I have had requests from a whole lot of you guys that you need these videos and they're helpful, so I decided that I should at least try to do at least one or two videos uh, on the module of the choice. Um, so I'm not going to be doing it like last year that I had like a set timetable. So now I will hear from you guys what you want us to discuss next, and then we do that. Uh, I know it might not be fair to others because I obviously go with the majority, but if you do feel like um, you are being excluded because there is obviously one important module that you want us to cover, we can always discuss that. We can always um, find a way and find time. Or I can always do the recording uh, by myself and then I can share it with you or upload it on YouTube. But anyway, <clears throat> no volunteers to tell us about how 2023 is going, it's fine. Um, so let's start. Today, I am not going to be the one that is doing the talking. As always, those who have joined me since last year, they know that um, here we talk, we have a dialogue, we talk. So, um, <clears throat> labor law. Um, let's start from the constitution. Who knows what an interim constitution is? Interim constitution, anyone? Okay, no volunteers again. Um, Anyone going once? Uh, Tibo, do you want to say something? Uh, going twice and gone. Okay, fine. 
The interim constitution was the fundamental law of South Africa from the first non uh, racial general election on 27 April 1994. And it was superseded by the um, final constitution, which we now refer to as the constitution uh, of 1996. We uh, refer to it properly as the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996. Uh, somebody said something. Sound. Uh, Mabato, I am. I'm not sure um, what you're referring to when you say sound. Uh, do you mean you cannot hear me? Uh, can everyone hear me? Uh, let's do that thumbs up thing again, if you can hear me. Thumbs up, thumbs down. No thumbs. Okay. Okay. If Lelo can hear me, I would assume that everybody else can hear me. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> let's continue. So, uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nogzota. So, we were on the on the interim constitution, we said it was the, the fundamental law of South Africa from the non racial general, uh, general election uh, that was in April 94, and it was replaced uh, by the final constitution, um, which we refer to as the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, um, do we know what constitutional supremacy is? Any volunteers? Constitutional supremacy. It's there on your constitution. If you have, if you have a copy of the constitution, either it's um, either it's uh, it's a PDF or is the actual constitution, um, it's there uh, on your constitution. Okay, let me attend to Mabato. I suggest that you know out and find two. Okay, uh, so if anyone can also communicate with Mabato, if she can see the message, I think she can. So I suggest that uh, she logs out and tries to log back in again because everyone else can hear me. So I think it's a problem from her side. So um, if you go to section, uh, section two of the constitution, you will see the heading, uh, it says, supremacy of the constitution. So section two of the constitution is the supremacy clause. It says this constitution is the supreme law of the Republic. Law or conduct inconsistent with it is invalid and obligations imposed by it must be fulfilled. So now we have the constitution out of the way. And then um, who has read um, or who has a copy of the Labor Relation, Relations Act. Not to, uh, today I'm gonna be talking by myself, but it's fine because I'm used to it. So uh, the Labor Relations Act, uh, that is um, the legislation uh, that governs um, uh, the, the labor laws of South Africa. The reason why I started with uh, section two of the constitution, uh, the constitutional su uh, supremacy is that uh, section two of the constitution is very clear on, 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 on what it says. It says any conduct inconsistent, any law or conduct inconsistent with the constitution 
is invalid and the obligations imposed by it must be fulfilled. So we are now very clear as to what uh, the Labor Relations Act should do. It should, or whatever rules or laws that we see in the Labor Relations Act, they should be consistent with the constitution. Otherwise, they will be seen um, as invalid. And also, if you have uh, the copy of your constitution with you, you can uh, go with me to section, section 23, subsection one. Section 23, subsection one, you will see it talks about um, the labor relations. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't make the slides. I just made my own notes. So um, obviously you won't be seeing anything on the screen. If I'm talking too fast, please, ladies and gentlemen, stop me. Tell me to slow down. I, especially if I'm talking by myself, now that nobody wants to, wants to be talking to me, so I have to be talking by myself. So I might be talking too fast. And if you're taking notes, you might not be able to, to follow. So please, you can tell me and be like, hey, look, doc, just slow down a bit, OK? I will definitely do that. So uh, if you go with me to section 23, uh, subsection 1, uh, subsection 1 to, to 6, actually, uh, it talks about labor relations. The reason why we are going to, to the constitution is because now we know that the constitution is the supreme law of the land. Uh, any law or conduct that is inconsistent with it um, is invalid. So the constitution is very clear on the labor relations. So we're all gonna go out into the workplace. We're going to be labor lawyers. We need to know section 23 by heart. It should be part of the of our prayers. So um, yeah, so uh section 23 one, everyone has the right to fair labor practices, every worker has the right to form and join a trade union, to participate in the activities and programs of the trade union, and uh the right to strike, and 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 I'm not going to read. Um, I'm not going to read the entire section 23. Um, you're going to read it by yourself. I have just laid the foundation and you know where to find it. So whenever you're looking for particular answers on what the constitution says about labor relations, you know your go-to guy. First is the section 23, subsection one to six because we know now that the constitution is the supreme law of the land. That is where you're gonna find your answers before you go to the Labor Relations Act that um, you should download and you should go through it and you should familiarize yourself with it because everything that's on your study guide, you will see it on that uh, Labor Relations and all the answers that you'll be looking for uh, from now going forward, you will find them on the Labor Relations Act. So um, let's talk about an employee. Guys, I really need your participation. Like seriously, I, I, I really need your participation. Um, I'm gonna go alphabetically. Um, so if you're not in a position where you're gonna speak, uh, I give you the floor. When I ask a question, you can unmute or you can put up your hand. Uh, but I'm going to start with Briggs. Briggs came in late, so we're going to start with Briggs. Briggs, uh, if you can, please tell us what an employee is. Briggs, please. Good evening, Briggs. OK, um, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Thank you for taking on the challenge. Okay. Um, the thing is, I'm actually not doing um, labor law. Yeah. I'm just, I just tune in to follow. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I, 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 I muted you by mistake. I am so sorry. Uh, you can please unmute and, and come back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually doing business law. Yeah. Uh, le legal practice management and uh, debt recovery. But yes. I just tune in just to listen to you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brice. But you do know what an employee is. You're working, right? Yes, I'm, I'm working. The em employee, how should I define it? An employee is... Um... <laughs> yo, yo, yo. It's... Um... There's, there's no right or wrong answer. The right answer will, will come out uh, in June. An employee is a person... Employer, employee. Employee is a person who works for someone or for a company. Okay, fair enough. Um, thank you, Briggs. Really appreciate your input there. Uh, Always, uh, Mabatu. Mabatu, I saw your hand. Uh, okay, we have Menzi. Menzi, you can take the floor. Oh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, Menzi, loud and clear. Okay, according to my own understanding, um, an employee um, is a, any person who provides um, services to, oh, okay, an employee is someone who works for another person or a company and in exchange of their services they get they get remunerated okay thank you thank you Menzi. that's um that's a perfect uh that's a perfect answer uh i saw there was another hand just now i don't know if it was yours Menzi. uh but if you had put your hand up you can put it up again i really want to hear from uh most of you guys, but 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 Menzi and 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 Briggs, thank you very much um, for your answers. So an employee, uh, all your answers are, are correct, but I would like to correct you, Menzi, when you say who provide services, because when you say services, um, you are getting a little bit uh, out of the way. But yes, it's somebody that that works. I think you corrected that. It's somebody in, uh, it's any person that excluding an independent contractor who works for another person or for the state or for a company who receives or is entitled to receive any remuneration, right? So an employee is any person who works for another person or works for a company. Thank you, Menzi. Works for a company. Or, is, or the state uh, who receives or is entitled to receive any remuneration. So if you work for another person, if you work for a certain company, maybe Clicks or APSA or I don't know, whatever, Oxford University, um, and then you, you are receiving a salary, or you are entitled to receive a salary, then you must know that you're an employee. So uh, in simpler terms, we can say it's any uh, person who in any manner assists in caring or conducting the business of an employer. So with the issue of services, uh, Menzi, that is um, the person who provides services, we usually refer to those as independent contractors. So we gonna go um, to that one of ind independent contractors um, just now. Uh, we have everyone here. Okay, let's take this minute and welcome everybody that just joined us and those that said they don't do labor law, they just came here to, to cheer on us and, 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 and give us support. Thank you, um, myself. And the labor law students here, we, we really appreciate that. So uh, in that definition of an, of an employee, we can see that um, 
there was something that was excluded. And that uh, thing that was excluded, it was the independent contractor because an independent contractor is something similar to an employee, but it's also something different, All right? So we will go uh, to that when we are distinguishing between um, the emplo employee and um, and the independent uh, independent <coughs> contractor. So before uh, before we move on, actually, I'm 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 very interested in knowing this. What is an employer? Yes, Menzi. Okay. Um, an employer is is um a person that um provides work to to employees and remunerates them. Okay. For working for that company. Okay, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Um, Maganda Lo, you wanted to say something? Limbo. You can take the floor, Limbo. All yours. Uh, limbo, your hands up. Uh, a person, okay, there's, there's an answer from Nogus Watash. It says, uh, a person, a company organization that pays people to work for them. I can record, um, there's no swear on it. Oh, okay, no, it's uh, very much understandable. Thank you, thank you for that answer. Uh, anyone else who wants to add to what, uh, knows what her answer she said it's a person a company or organization that pays people to work for them that's from no resort uh, i can see a hint from limbo um and you are yes, good evening. Can you hear me? yes yes definitely okay uh in my own understanding an employee is someone is someone who gives work to someone at the end of the day that person needs to pay that person for the work done Okay, that's a good answer for the employee. And how about an employer? An employer. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna have to skip that one. Okay, all right. Uh, not a problem. So um, no yes, can, I gave can it. Can I try? Yes, yes, Prince. Um, I think an employer is a person or an organization that employs people. Yeah, that's that, that's a perfect answer. Uh, how about um, how about this is just for argument's sake, okay? Uh, I just want to 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 I just want us to think out of the box. How about a okay. person who who employs um, who employs uh, do we do we know about guide dogs, right? Can you employ a guide dog to to guide you? Hmm, I understand, yeah. Can you? A guide dog. Yeah, can you employ a guide dog? Hmm, this one is tricky. Just just think out of the box. Um, yes, a guide dog. Um, a guide dog. Um, I think you cannot employ a guide dog, but then you can employ the owner of the guide dog. Because at the end of the day, the guide dog is not um a human being that can come and speak for itself when when um when in terms of when in terms of the contract one is going to be displayed. So we can, in case, like we can um, employ the owner to be the spokesperson of the guide dog that is going to 
to give out its services to the employer. Thank you, Menzi. You know, um, I'm, I'm smiling right now. I wish I put my video on, but I had a very long day and my face is all oily. But I'm smiling right now when you're giving that response because you are spot on and there is no better way to answer that question because we already saw it from our definition of an employer, that it is a person, an organization or a company that employs people, right? So um, you couldn't have said it any better. And um, <clears throat> before, before we continue, um, do, we, do we know of, um, I'm sure we all do, uh, employment, employment agencies, right? So we know that um, employment agencies are businesses that find employers and employees for those seeking them. I, I just had to throw this in because I thought it was um, relevant to, to our topic today when we're talking about employers and employees. And then um, obviously in between, we know that uh, the employment agencies, they usually work as, um, they usually work as a, as a middleman. You know, they're, they're like a bridge between, uh, between the employer and the employee. We know that sometimes companies are very busy um, to, 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 to look for people to work for them. That's where the employment agencies come in to fill in that, uh, that particular gap, uh, just to cover that gap where employers don't have time and then the agencies will come in, they find people, they interview them and they provide them to, to, to agencies. It was not part of today's work, but I thought I should just, um, I should just throw, uh, I should just throw that in. So, um, okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, individual, uh, individual labor law. Uh, I think I saw that on your, on your study guide where you're supposed to distinguish between uh, individual labor law and collective um, collective labor law. So let's start with um, <clears throat> let's start with individual labor law. What is that? Individual labor. What, 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 what does anyone know what that is? It is there on your textbook. Um, uh, just to add on the issue of, of the textbook. I, I do believe you guys use the law at work textbook. Uh, I know that I do have people from, from other, um, other universities and the textbook uh, per university, they differ. Uh, some universities prefer that um, uh, we use textbooks that are, um, are written by people that work for their universities. So the textbooks might might differ, but to those of you from uh from study, I know that you use that blue uh greenish book uh, that says Law at Work, the fifth edition. So it is there on that uh, on that textbook, and it's also there on your on your study guide. So if this textbook differs to the one of the institution, you are very much welcome to tell me that that's not the textbook I'm using, but the content is always the same. If it's not the same, it differs uh, a little, but the difference is not that much. So it is there on your textbook and it's also there on the study, or, um, study guide. So uh, an individ uh, individual labor law, it is the relationship between a person in work and his employer is governed by the employment contract between, um, between the two parties. I think you can still find that on your I don't know what your study guide says. Um, I don't have it open, but if you have the study guide, you can just confirm if that is the same. So now let's talk about collective labor law. What is that? Collective labor law. Anyone? Okay. Uh, Nogzota said she can't speak where she is. Uh, Sihata. Okay, we have Mabato. Mabato? 
you can unmute. Okay, good evening. Hi, Mama. Uh, the, coll the collective uh, law is a relationship between the employer and the organized labor. Okay, thank you. That is that, that is a perfect answer. We cannot add anything more. Um, but now, what is, we understand that it's the relationship between employers. We know what employers are. Uh, and we did uh, give the definition of an employer. A everyone is clear with the definition of an employer, right? We, we now know what the employer is. Uh, I would assume so. But then in your answer, Mabato, you said it's a relationship between employers uh, and, and the union. organized labor, which is correct. Um, but what, is, what is organized labor? Unions. It's unions. Uh, anybody has a different answer? Uh, it's the trade unions, right? Okay. Yes. So, so, so that is that is uh, those trade unions, and then um, the purpose of trade unions. Does anyone know what that is? Uh, Sihata, I, I always wanted to hear from Sihata. Let's see what Sihata says. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but uh, let's hear from you. Representing. Representing uh, them. Uh, Sihata. Representing okay, let, let's hear from anyone. Represent the labor in trade unions is to represent their members. Yes, so uh, they represent um, their members. So they, they, they represent the common interest of, of workers in, in a particular industry. So, yeah. so like for, for example, um, uh, South Africa, we have uh, a broad uh, example of the, of the trade unions because we, we have uh, trade unions possibly in each and every industry. We have trade unions for teachers. We have trade unions for health workers. We have trade unions for the mining industry and so on and so on. So they represent, they represent that common um, common interest in, um, in a particular industry. Is there anyone who is not clear about the the, the position of trade trade unions in, in our country. Um, does anyone have a question with what we covered so far? Should I go back? Um, should I answer any question? Uh, do you want the videos? Do you have any question before we go on? Okay, perfect, which means uh, we can uh, we can move on. So we are almost uh, we're almost done with our session for today because it's mostly a recap from last year and also to um, to accommodate uh, those ones that are joining us today uh, for the first time. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about. Um, Let's talk about the contract of employment and uh, the independent contractor. I think we did touch a little bit on the on the independent contractor. We have Limbo in the waiting room. Um, okay, he's in. Uh, let, let's talk about the contract of employment versus uh, the independent contractor. So. Uh, does anyone know what is a contract of employment? Please don't tell me it's a document because I've already known. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyone wants to tell me about the contract of employment? Can we have somebody new? Like somebody who hasn't said anything today. What do you think a contract of employment is? Uh, Lelo? An agreement. An agreement. 
Okay. Uh, what does that actually stipulate? It stipulates the rights. The rights. Eh? And what is expected from the employee. Okay. Yeah, it 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 defines, it gives um actually it tells the employee what is expected from him and the employer will be notified in the contract of employment about his, his or her leave entitlement uh, uh, the payment and the overtime okay that, that, that is a good answer very um very much detailed uh, so obviously we can start by saying it is a document or it is an agreement that attributes the rights and responsibilities between the employee and the employer. And then um, once we have that contract of employment in place, we have now a relationship, right? We have a relationship between these two parties. So the relationship that is established by an employment contract is an employer employee relationship nothing more nothing more than that. and then um, that relationship is governed by the by the contract right and in that contract it is the rights the responsibilities possibly the benefits how much you're going to be getting paid your hours of work and so on and so on so those are the things that are usually stipulated in the in the employment um, in the employment. So um, there is something that I, I I'm not going to cover in detail uh, because your your study guides already um, already covers that, but I do feel that it's uh, very important that you know that. Uh, your study guide talks about um, it talks about the four tests that are established by the courts to distinguish between an employment contract and an um, and an independent contractor. But before we go to those, uh, that will be the last uh, thing that we're going to cover. Um, <clears throat> let's let's find out the definition of an independent contractor. What do you think an independent contractor is? No right or wrong answer. Uh, or, or what do you guys think an independent contractor is? Uh, anyone? So, yes, yes, go ahead, Mabatu. It's a, it's a contract that I can perform through others. Okay. Um, good. Okay. So, so, so if if I'm an I'm an independent contractor, right? Let's say. Um, I don't know what example to use, but if if I'm an independent contractor, I am not an employee. So, for example, let's say um, Briggs, um, uh, Briggs is looking for, um, Briggs has a company, and the mm. company, uh, maybe they make, they make chocolates, and then I'm, a, I'm an independent contractor, and then Briggs needs my services, and my services, Maybe is to make and print packaging for for, for print chocolates, right? So okay. the difference between myself as an independent contractor and people that signed an employment contract with with Brits, right, is that those people they work under Brits supervision, right? They go to work uh, during the the stipulated times on their contract and their conditions. Everything is governed by, by Briggs and his policy, right? While on the other hand, myself uh, as Tabang, I am I'm an independent contractor. I provide my services to, to Briggs. I am not bound by 
BRICS's uh, employment contract. So myself and BRICS have uh, an independent uh, independent contractor contract, which I, I provide BRICS my services. I don't work for BRICS. I don't, um, thank you, Nox, a self-employed or entity contracted to perform work to another entity. I don't work for BRICS. I don't, I, I, I don't answer to him. He is not my boss. Um, he can't he can't tell me what to do, but he can tell me what he wants me to do, right? That is before I perform the work. You'll be like, okay, I want the packaging for my chocolates. Um, I want it at the specific date. Um, and I, 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 I want it delivered. But he's not going to tell me how to do my work. I'm not going to answer to him. I will do my work the way that I want. If I need, if I want to, if I want to employ other people, or if I want to employ another business to do the packaging for bricks, it has nothing to do with bricks. What bricks wants is the packaging for the chocolates. Like knows what I said, it's a self-employed uh, or entity contracted to perform work to another entity. So it's something completely different. And uh, at, at that moment, I am. I am not working for bricks. Um, I do not have working hours for bricks. I am my own business, just providing services for him for a set period of time or for a fixed, uh, it, it's like a fixed, they, there is a, a certain date that our contract expires. So that, that that's, the, that's the difference between the two, because I know they will ask you, what's the difference between the contract of employment and uh and the independent contractor so the independent contractor in simple terms is not subject to the control or the direction of the organization that they are uh, performing their services for so like i said if i'm i'm i'm, I'm providing services for bricks um i am my own company bricks is not my boss uh, me and him are on the same level. He's actually my client. Uh, that's the word that they use. He's actually my client at that um, at that particular moment. So now, um, uh, does anyone have a question there? Ooh, I see people coming in while we are about to close. Okay. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, any questions, guys? No questions. Okay, cool. Um, so let's talk about the, um, the four tests that are established by the courts to distinguish between uh, an employment contract and an independent contractor. And uh, those four tests, you will see them on your, on your study guide, All right? I don't know what page number, but you will see them on your study guide. And uh, I'm not going to dwell on them that much. Uh, hi to me, you are late. Um, we are about to close. So those four tests is um, it's one is the first one is the control test, uh, the organization test, multiple test, dominant impression, uh, multiple test or dominant impression test, or the economic test. So if you want to know more about um, those tests, you can read them on your study guide and they are very important, I promise you that. They are very, very important for you to, if you're writing like sit down exams, you need to know this by heart. You can um, read more about them there on your, on your study guide. I'm not sure, I, I think they're also on the, or on that, uh, on that textbook. Oh, hi, Kanya's mommy. Kanya's mommy says, independent contractor is outsourced uh, by the company, yes, yes, yes. Maga uh, Kanya, that is um, that is the correct answer. Um, okay. Uh, so in in closing, I want you to to use your textbook uh, just to 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 remind yourself of this session that we covered today. So on the next session, we're going to use uh, the study guide to continue 
from where we left off. I think, um, okay, there's a place that is a worker, an employee or an independent contractor. You find that on um, chapter four of your textbook, you read from page 60 going forward, um, you will see the difference between uh, the contract of employment and an independent contractor. And that is um, a possible ex exam question. Uh, for the guys at Studio, because I'm using the, the study guide from, from Studio. That, that question is always there. So you need to know the difference between that. You can use your study guide. You will see the listed there for you. And then you can use um, you can use your textbook as well. You will see that it's on chapter four, both for uh, employee contract and independent contract. It's on your study guide and it's on chapter four of your textbook. So ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this session. I know there is people that just came in now. I know Dumi just came in now. Uh, Linda also came in now. Um, so uh, to those that came in, welcome, even though we are saying goodbye. Uh, this session was being recorded. Um, we will have it uh, uploaded tonight um, on YouTube. I'll share the channel on WhatsApp. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe so that you can be able to get the notifications whenever I, I upload I upload something. So before we close, does anyone has a question? Question going once. Um, hi. Hi, Lelo. Hello. Uh, oh, I want to ask what should we prepare for the next session so that we are not as many as today? Okay, so, so what are you going to cover for the next session? So, for the next session, Lelo, um, for the next session, I want you to read. Do you have the textbook? Yes. We do have the textbook. Okay, so for the next session, please read chapter four of the textbook. And then when you read chapter four of the textbook, I want you to go to your study guide, right? And then on your study guide, you must look at study unit two. Uh, it says on your study guide topic two, where it says the contract of employment. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so you go through the entire uh, topic two. It's not really uh, long. It's uh, a couple of pages. I think it's one or two pages. So you we look at topic two. That's what we're going to look at um, in our next session, which should be um, should be next week. So. Yeah, so that is it from my side. Uh, does anyone else have a question? Anyone else has a question? Okay, if no one has a question, I'm going to stop recording.